Number 10, Madam X. We'll kick off this part two with a scandalous painting. Oh my, yes, shield your eyes, young ones. We got spaghetti straps coming in hot. This painting was deemed too scandalous back in the day. Madam X, the portrait of Virginie Amélie Avignon Gertreau, originally painted back in 1884 by John Singer Sargent. Now at first, John made the woman's straps sliding off her shoulder, a little, you know, a little, ooh, my lovely jewel strap is, ooh, slipped off, ooh. Apparently that was too scandalous for the upper class society around him back then, so John had to repaint the straps back on. Yeah, backlash was still so strong after John had sold the painting that he moved. The guy left Paris because of spaghetti straps. Are you kidding? What have we done? Art, he's so good, and we pushed him away. Come paint me like one of your fine French gals. Paint all the straps on me, I don't care. On or off, what's up, let's party. Number nine, Hidden Beached Whale. Look closely at this 1641 landscape from Henrik van and Thonnison. This masterpiece here is titled View of Skeveningen Sands. Yeah, it's a nice one. It's pretty cold of a day. I wouldn't go to the beach personally. Do you notice anything out of the ordinary in this painting? Anything at all catching your eye? What's everyone looking at here, you know? Art is so mysterious. So many questions in this one painting. I just, I feel like we're missing something here, you know? Like just something in this painting. What about now? Yeah, there was a beached whale in that painting the entire time, and we didn't know until 2014. How amazing is that? At some point after it had been completed, the work of art was painted over. So for hundreds of years, somebody was looking at this wondering what the meaning was. He's like, why are they all on the beach? What are they looking at? It was a beached whale this whole time. It was haunting the entire time to look at. Someone didn't like that. You know what, rightfully so. I would have painted over that whale too. No, I wouldn't have. That's a fabulous painting. I would have never touched that. Number eight, David and Goliath. We of course have to look at some of the artwork of the Sistine Chapel that's loaded with history. Fun history, some would say. A panel that shows David and Goliath specifically, or rather it shows David about to defeat the Goliath. Michelangelo added a hidden message in this one painting. The stance that David is making looks heroic. He's got, you know, athletic stance for sure to, you know, do some bad stuff right away. But his stance is in the shape of a Hebrew letter, the letter Gimel, which refers to reward and punishment. Good thing it wasn't Resh or else he wouldn't have won the battle. His arm would be all the way over here. He'd be like that. Wouldn't have won at all. These are like Easter eggs and famous paintings. So far, I'm loving this. And if you're enjoying the content as well, hit that thumbs up. Let us know, then we can do more art for you. Let's move on. Number seven, hidden self-portrait. In George Surratt's painting of a woman powdering herself, there's a window in the top left corner. And me, personally, I would have gone with, you know, the sun. But George here, at first, he went with a self-portrait. A little selfie. This was odd behavior though, historically, for this artist because he wasn't known for painting self-portraits, ever. This was the only time it happened. Thanks to the Courtauld Gallery in London and a few x-rays, now we can make out the first draft of this 19th century painting. The portrait does resemble a photo of George as well. We compare them both, so we're definitely able to confirm that's him. He did at least one self-portrait. That's pretty historical. I'm, I'm glad we found it. X-rays were actually done back in 1958 and 1987, but the machine could only detect a layer of paint, not the actual image, if there was one. Pointillism is so impressive. I tried it one summer and was absolute garbage. Number six, Garden of Earthly Delights. This this piece was done back in the late 15th century. Painter Hieronymus Bosch had a lot going on in this one, that's for sure. There's a group of naked people eating a big strawberry. There's a mermaid riding a fish. This one's got a lot of wacky stuff on it. We love it. In 2014, a hidden message was found on somebody's butt. Yeah, I'm not joking. There's actual like music notes drawn across somebody's bottom. Uh, so a college student translated it and now you can listen to it. You can listen to that guy's butt. That little melody Bosch was humming to himself while he was painting sounded like this. Yeah, well, it's not gonna be stuck in our heads anytime soon, but it's still fun to hear art come to life, you know? Number five, a starry night. We had Van Gogh in part one, Cafe Terrace at night, so naturally, we have to throw him in part two as well. The only time we've seen Vincent Van Gogh as a time traveler was in Doctor Who, but how did Vincent Van Gogh know about turbulent flow decades before scientists even knew about it? Yeah, that's the question we're trying to answer here on MA10. The Starry Night was painted back in 1889, but in 2004, NASA observed a distant star where dust and gas were swirling around the cosmos. It reminded NASA of Van Gogh's work, so they looked into his art a bit more, and mathematically, his artwork mirrors natural turbulence. This was also at a time where Van Gogh's mental health was not A-OK, -okay, so how he was able to get the math is accurate that long ago, and also via art, is mind-blowing. Number four, Bacchus. 
Michelangelo Caravaggio, okay. His 1595 painting, Bacchus, looks pretty calm at first. The god of wine and being a tipsy, a personal favorite god of mine, if I may. It's currently in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, and it wasn't until 2009 where, if you guessed it, they found a hidden image. In the carafe of wine on the bottom left of the painting, there is a self-portrait of Caravaggio. We can't see it with our eyes, but technology, once again, has our back here. There's a tiny little head reflected on the wine jug. Maybe, it just looks like a smudge at first, but with the help of radio diagnostic investigation, we can see the bigger slash smaller picture. We can see a man with his arms stretched out, the world's smallest selfie for the win. Number three, The Last Supper. We've all seen this one at some point, I'm confident. If you haven't, Look at this, isn't that amazing? I'm glad I was able to show you this. The Last Supper, painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the late 15th century, has been the talk of many towns. In this painting, we see John the Apostle, and it's been debated that it's actually Mary in disguise. I know, don't tell anyone. And that V-shape in between Jesus and John represents the female womb. That was in Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. I didn't make that up. If I made that up, I wouldn't be here, that's crazy. But another secret could be lying in plain view this whole time right on the table. In 2007, an Italian musician found hidden musical notes in this painting. Musical notes hiding in bread rolls and in the hand of the apostles. We have two musical messages in this video, that's crazy. This makes me wanna look for more clues in paintings. Let me just go look at some butts on art for a bit. Any notes on butts? What does that one say, it's an E minor? No. I'm gonna start looking at more musical notes on butts of all the paintings. I'm gonna try and find one. That one's kind of an E flat, you know? E flat. That's how we do it. Number two, the separation of light from darkness. This one's another anatomical one. Makes me feel weird. Once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. I'm not gonna lie to you. The separation of light from darkness, Michelangelo again. Michelangelo was featured on part one, the creation of Adam. It's definitely an iconic piece. But once you see the hidden organs in that painting, it changes you for a bit, you know? This one as well, another iconic piece from Michelangelo seen in the Sistine Chapel. We have the central figure, God, surrounded by four others. What we often miss though, is the spinal cord that runs up God's chest. It's like one of those hidden object books, only the art is beautiful and the objects are gross. I'm like, oh, it's a spinal cord. That's found it. And finally, number one, the lady in the grass. We'll end this part two on another piece by Van Gogh. Patch of Grass was a Van Gogh classic done in 1887, and upon first glance, the painting appears to be, well, nothing more than just that, a patch of grass. But it's beautiful and it's art, so naturally we'll look at it for too long. Oh, it's just a wall? That's not art. I thought it was the grass. That's just the wall. This one doesn't contain any deep space mathematics by any means, but in 2008, Dutch researchers used an x-ray, took a deeper look into the grass, and found the portrait of a woman. How haunting is that of a discovery? Imagine being the first person to find that. That's really scary. That's a horror movie. Around one third of Van Gogh's artwork has old paintings underneath it. He would often paint over his stuff. We're only recently finding them, which is exciting. Scientist Joris Deek of the Delft University of Technology, he's literally peeling back layers of paint history digitally. The painting right now hangs in the Dutch eastern city, Aturlo, in the Kroller Mueller Museum. So next time you take a look at this masterpiece, just know that there's a woman's face looking back at you. Kicking off the list at number 10, the creation of Adam. We'll start this list off with one of the most famous paintings of sculptor and artist, Michelangelo. The creation of Adam. You've seen it at one point or another, or you've seen it referenced at one point or another. It was painted back in 1508. The poster of E.T. was inspired by this painting. With little hands, little oh, phone home. Memes have been on a whole new level thanks to Michelangelo in this piece. But what's the dark background here exactly? Perhaps the plethora of naked folks in the sky were all bunched up together? Not exactly. It was known that back in the 1500s, Michelangelo used to dissect bodies, all in the name of art. Of course, why not? He would create anatomic artwork, that's why his creation of Adam kind of looks like he's crawling out of an organ. To be honest, I never noticed it at first, now, I can't unsee it. That's definitely the inside of a body. The Sistine Chapel has many dark pieces of art. I may or may not mention another. Number nine, Bill Clinton. We've all heard that clip downloading music growing up. You know, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Like bro, I'm trying to listen to Christmas music. What is this? Whose voice is this? What did I download? Why is this computer not working anymore? I'm so grounded. Back in 2006, former US President Bill Clinton showed off this beautiful portrait of himself, done by the incredible artist John Nelson Shanks. As far as portraits go, this is beautiful, the art is beautiful and all that, but that pose, I mean, I don't know, something's, something's off about it. His stance is like, let me redo it. He just looks uncomfortable, you know? He doesn't look ready yet. Well, that's because the shadow on the left side of the portrait, it's meant to represent Monica Lewinsky. 
I'm not even lying to you. I knew it. I felt like there was some darkness in here. I'm like, oh, something's off here. There's some shady history around. Pun intended. The artist himself admitted that this was indeed the case. He used the dress shape as symbolism to the scandal while he was creating the artwork. I thought the dark background here was Bill's pants, but well, I was wrong. That's why we're here. We like to educate. Number eight, the Madonna with Saint Giovanni. For this next one, we'll be taking a look at a painting from the 15th century by artist Domenico Ghirlandio. This painting is currently in the Hall of Hercules in Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. Also, if I'm saying any of these names wrong, you can tell me, I'm, it's probably gonna be a lot of them. I'm trying. The painting shows the Virgin Mary, infant Jesus, of course, with a six pack, for some reason. And over her right shoulder, we can see this object floating in the sky. Let's take a closer look at that, shall we? What is that? Is that a drone? A magnetic balloon? A, a weather balloon? Those weren't around then. What's even more interesting is that a man is looking up at the sky at this object. He's even covering his eyes, shielding the sun to try and get a better look. Man's going blind to try and see what's hovering above him. It's always a good sign as well when your dog is barking at something next to you in the sky. Art historians believe that the object is an angel, an angel resembling a cloud, while others believe that it's a clear sign of alien visitors. I'm others. I'm like, oh, E.T., the whole thing. I'm, this is starting to make more sense now. What do you guys think? Was this the 15th century version of drawing the sun at the top corner of your painting? Or did this mystery artist just document UFO footage with his own brush? Number seven, Cafe Terrace at Night. Upon first glance, you can tell this is a piece done by the fabulous Vincent Van Gogh. The blue tones, the streaks. I did the Van Gogh experience downtown Toronto and it was mesmerizing, honestly. The floor is moving, I was like, falling into the walls and everything, it was great. While his 1888 oil painting, Cafe Terrace at Night, looks like a quiet late night summer dream, it's actually pretty dark when you start looking closely. I'm not a Van Gogh expert by any means, but Jared Baxter, he is. Back in 2015, Jared brought forth this idea that Cafe Terrace at Night was really Van Gogh's version of The Last Supper. This figure in the center with long hair and 12 surrounding individuals, one of which is slipping into darkness, it checks out. He also says there are hidden crucifixes in this painting. I knew there was something spiritual about that Van Gogh exhibit. I knew it all around me. I'm like, is that a floating crucifix? Where'd it go? It's gone. Number six, Medusa. Another one of the most recent paintings on today's list is Medusa by Caravaggio. It was done back in 1597. Crazy that that's a recent painting. That's so long ago in my head. And this photo, I'll admit right off the bat, is a little bit haunting. It's, yeah, it's a little gory, it's a little graphic. But where does this idea come from? What compels a person to spend this long on a scary painting? The entire time I'd be like, mm -hmm. We all know the story of Medusa, the woman with, you know, snakes for hair, when you look at them, you turn to stone and then you're stuck forever and it's horrible. Well, this is a painting that really captures her, her essence, her beauty, you know, really just, uh, her complexion is so nice, her snake complexion. The snakes really add to the moment, you know, without taking away. The blood oozing out of her neck also draws the eye, it's a nice, Oh, it's a nice accent. This painting was meant to be a depiction of the defeat of Medusa, obviously. The legend goes that Perseus, who is the son of Zeus and Danae, was given a shield by Athena. He took said shield to battle Medusa and he managed to outsmart her by letting her catch a glimpse of her own reflection in that shield. Bam, you played yourself. Yeah, she turned herself into stone and then this is when he took his sword out and you know, you can probably fill the rest in. You've seen Game of Thrones. A happy moment, perhaps. I don't know. Imagine having this in your home. I wouldn't sleep. That's terrifying to look at. Number five, the Mona Lisa. No way she's on this list. What is she up to? How can the Mona Lisa possibly be on this dark messages list? She's literally just... She's chilling out, she's so calm. Another masterpiece from Da Vinci, coming from the 15th century. There's already been, of course, hundreds of theories surrounding this painting. Like perhaps she could have been pregnant, given her stance with the, you know, the hands doing the thing. And the veil over her shoulders, those were worn often by pregnant women during the Italian Renaissance. But back in 2011, a clue was found in the painting. Yeah, a clue, like we're national treasure all of a sudden. Silvano Vincetti supposedly found letters and numbers painted into her eyes. Teeny tiny microscopic numbers and letters. How fun is that? Yeah, I was at my desk earlier and my forehead was like touching my computer screen. I was like, really, are you sure? I was looking, couldn't find anything. My eyes aren't that great. The L over her right eye stands for Leonardo and in the other eye, there's a 72, the number seven and two. We believe so far this relates to Christianity and Judaism. Seven, the creation of the world and two, the duality of men and women. Meanwhile, I'm over here drawing that really cool S. I think I nailed that, I'm not gonna lie. Number four, 
The Ambassadors. This one got me, I'm not gonna lie, I got the creeps after this. The Ambassadors is a painting from 1533. I've seen this one before, as I'm sure you have at one point or another. Hans Hobian the Youngers painted this lovely room with, you know, scholars, there's a globe, a mandolin, you know, to pass the time, help inspiration, as we all, that's why we get mandolins. We have one in the corner here at the studio. Chris whips it, often. But at the bottom, we see an anamorphic skull. It makes you want to cock your head around almost. It doesn't seem to fit in properly. Like the angle of the skull is wrong. It looks like whenever I try and use Photoshop, it's just something's off. Experts believe this was done intentionally to remind us that death is around the corner. So when I was looking at this, I was like, why is that doing that? And I'm like, oh, death is around the haunting. Next. Number three, the old guitarist. Any fans of Game of Thrones on here? Well, this next one gives off major White Walker vibes. The old guitarist is, well, exactly what you think. It's an old man, hunched over, white hair, playing a guitar. This would be creepy regardless, just on its own. But when Pablo Picasso was putting together this masterpiece back in the early 1900s, he had some tricks up his sleeve. At the end of the 1900s, in 1998, researchers used infrared on the painting. Again, national treasure style for some reason. And this time, it wasn't a hidden message, it was a hidden woman. Yeah, another woman was painted underneath the elderly man. So because this paint is naturally fading now, she's becoming more and more clear to see. That is so deep. That's the most deep thing. Am I into art? Am I enjoying art? Am I researching? This is fun. I like this. Number two, Netherlandish proverbs. Back in 1559, Peter Bruegel the Elder, great name, created this oil painting and we're still trying to unravel everything in here. In this painting, I mean, for one, it's massive. There's a lot going on. It's on display currently in the Gamal the Gallery in Berlin. It's got a lot going on. And when you really start to focus, you can see some weird going on in this painting. What is that guy doing? That guy's banging his head off the wall. Walter White's been throwing pizzas on the roof for some reason. That fish ate a bigger fish. This dude fell off an ox onto a donkey. What kind of heist was going on in this town? What is happening? Ah, uh, I see. It's supposed to be horrible. Lovely. Proverbs were a hot topic back in the 1500s. Apparently, over 100 Dutch proverbs and idioms are seen in this painting. He also aimed to illustrate the stupidity of man, and given how much of a shit show this town looks like, I'd say Peter nailed it. And finally, number one, the Arnolfini portrait. This one is the most impressive paintings on our list. I am a sucker for reflections. And for this one, we'll be looking at Jan van Eck's painting from 1434. It's quite old, the oldest on our list. This is an oil painting titled the Arnolfini Portrait. It shows Giovanni de Nicolaio Arnolfini, his wife, and a little doggo. In the background, that's where things get mysterious. There's a mirror, a painted mirror. It's been widely believed that Jan is in the painting themselves. We love an artist cameo, nice. I'm actually in that wall too. Believe it or not, you just can't see me yet. It hasn't been long enough. Also, written in Latin above the mirror, there's a message. A Latin message. Let's do it. The message reads, Jan van Eck was here. 1434. That's got to be the oldest blank was here of all time. Even older than Brooks was here from Shawshank Redemption. That was pretty old. A message like that with the artist hidden in the painting, that gives me goosebumps all around. And I'm not really entirely sure why. Starting off, we have the Stagecraft by Laura P. This is an interesting one because it's actually an interpretation of a real life photograph taken by the photographer James Kidd. James uh, hadn't noticed it at first. Once the picture was developed, there was what looked to be a headless man standing on a log beside the old wagon he took a photo of. James even took the picture to experts to have them confirm that the picture hadn't been altered in any way. And apparently, at least according to everyone he spoke to, it hadn't. Artist Laura P created oil paintings based on photographs and felt compelled to recreate kids' stagecoach photo. She described feeling a deep sense of dread almost as soon as she started the piece. And once it was finished, she hung it at a local office where bizarre occurrences began being reported. The painting would be crooked every morning and would have to be readjusted things would go missing in the office. Laura was urged to take down the paintings, so she decided to move it into her own home where she would report even more eerie occurrences. Laura began hearing strange noises in her home, like knocks and footsteps. Objects would be found knocked over. Doors would be seemingly opened on their own. Even some of Laura's friends would report strange occurrences after visiting her home. Her neighbor snapped photos of the painting, and when he returned home, he claimed to have seen a white, hazy figure out of the corner of his eye. He came running back to Laura's house saying he never wanted to touch the pictures again. 
The Hands Resist Him by Bill Stoneham. Completed in 1972, this piece is notorious for being one of the most cursed paintings in modern history. All of you probably have heard of this one already. Most of the dark rumors surrounding this painting began on eBay, where the seller claimed that the painting was haunted and that the boy and girl in the painting would move around at night. Word began to spread across the internet about this strange eBay listing, and some of the people who looked at the painting reported feeling uncomfortable or even ill. It was even revealed that the first critic to review the painting, as well as the owner of the gallery who first displayed the piece, both passed away within one year of first seeing it. Now, I can definitely see why this painting could conjure up some creepy feelings in people. It's an unsettling piece of art, the way the boy seems to stare straight at you with the odd doll-like girl beside him standing in front of a window with a void of pure blackness on the other side, except for the small hands that look as if they're attempting to break through the glass. Stoneham's inspiration for the painting comes from Carl Jung's theory of the collective unconscious, that the collective experience of those who have lived before you have influence over you from the day that you're born and that we're closest to this collective unconscious when we dream. Stonem stated when talking about his inspiration for the painting, the hands are the other lives. The glass door, that thin veil between waking and dreaming. The girl slash doll is the imagined companion or guide through this realm. Number eight, The Crying Boy by Bruno Amarillo, aka Giovanni Bragolin. Uh, the painting, or series of paintings released, started getting mass produced in the 50s, but in the mid 80s, they started gaining a dark reputation of being cursed. The origins of this superstition began in the mid 80s when a series of unexplained fires occurred in homes across England. Surprisingly, amidst the ashes and devastation, the Crying Boy paintings were found in Hacked in numerous affected houses. The disturbing pattern led to the widespread belief that the painting itself had a malevolent force causing the fires and bringing misfortune upon those who possessed it. Some actually claimed that these paintings were responsible for causing the fire in their homes. And adding to the mystery, several owners claimed that their misfortunes persisted even after attempting to dispose of the painting. These, these paintings were just really hard to burn, apparently. The only question I have at the end of the day, though, is why anyone would want to hang a painting of a, of a crying kid on their wall. No offense to the artist or anything, but uh, why? Next up on the list, we have Love Letters by Richard King, painted in 1990. This painting is actually a replica of Charles Trevor Garland's piece of the same name. The artwork depicts a young girl believed to be Samantha Houston, the daughter of a prominent local family. Legend has it that Samantha fell to her death while staying at the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas, where the painting still hangs today. Some guests at the hotel claim to feel uneasy around the painting. It seems as if her eyes follow you around. There have even been reports of people fainting upon looking at it for too long. It's also said that if you again stare at the painting for a particularly long time, her expression begins to sort of change or that she even slightly shifts her position. The Dead Mother by Edvard Munch. Munch or Munch is known for his particularly harrowing pieces. His first famous work is, of course, The Scream, an image that is immediately recognizable, but this is his only work that's said to actually be haunted. Let's just start with the title, shall we? Dead Mother. Probably not going to be a very happy painting. Uh, the piece depicts a child standing next to her deceased mother's bed, who's believed to have passed away from tuberculosis. Munch also painted multiple versions of this piece, but the concept is always the same. A mother lays dead in her bed, and in the foreground we see a young girl looking straight at us, her hands covering her ears with a look of shock and devastation on her face. It's easy to see why a painting like this could develop such a dark reputation. It's inherently unsettling and sad. Some have said that the eyes of the child seem to follow those who look at the painting, but the creepiest legend behind this art Work is those that claim to hear the slight rustling of the bedsheets when standing close to the piece. 
The portrait of Bernardo de Galvez. First of all, the artist is unknown, so that adds a mysterious layer to the whole thing. The painting depicts the Spanish military leader, Bernardo de Galvez, who aided American forces in the Revolutionary War. It hangs in the hallway of Hotel Galvez in Galveston, Texas, which looks, uh, looks really nice, by the way. Anyway, this painting really looks like your classic haunted house kind of portrait where the eyes follow you as you walk, which some guests and staff at the hotel claim happens with this one. Some guests have also reported seeing orbs and feeling uh, cold spots near the painting. There's also a rumor that if you try to take a picture of the portrait without asking for Galvez's uh, permission, the picture will come out distorted or out of focus. I'm not sure how this would go with modern technology uh, that we had today, but uh, if I ever find myself in this hotel, probably won't unfortunately, but one can dream, and if I do, just running straight over to that painting painting to try and snap me a picture before even checking in. Heading straight for it. Number four, The Rain Woman by Svetlana Telitz. Telitz had described feeling as if someone or something had been watching her for about six months before she sat down to create this piece. She also describes feeling like her hand was being guided by some other force when she created the painting in 1996 and that it took just five hours to complete. Multiple people who purchased the painting from her would end up returning it, describing the unsettling presence the piece would have in their homes. People would complain about having insomnia or getting terrible nightmares. They would feel as if they were being watched and experience intense negative emotions. And I gotta say, out of all the paintings on this list, this one uh, it kind of gets to me the most. There's something so haunting about it. I feel like if I look at it for too long, she's gonna like a little smile at me or something like that. The distorted body, the strange hat, the dark gloomy backdrop. It's a, it's a freaky painting. I don't know what else to say. Imagine having this hanging on your wall, getting up in the middle of the night to like grab a glass of water or something and just seeing the silhouette of the rain woman staring back at you in the darkness. No, 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 no. The Portrait of Henriette Nelson by William Johnson. In 1816, Henrietta Nelson met a tragic end when she fell down a staircase in her residence in Yaxley Hall, located in the English town of Eye. Following her demise, in accordance with her final wishes, she was laid to rest in a mausoleum situated on the property. However, as time passed, new owners took over the estate and destroyed the mausoleum, opting to relocate Henrietta's remains to a nearby by church. And since then, a local legend has emerged claiming that Henrietta's spirit has been lingering on the grounds, persistently seeking a way back to her intended final resting place. According to reports, a painting of Henrietta created by William Johnson has become a vessel for her kind of ethereal presence. It's said that her ghost accompanies the portrait even when it is removed from the house. Witnesses have described unsettling occurrences like her expression slowly changing in the painting, as well as sightings of a kind of ghostly figure draped in the same attire as Henrietta, wandering the estate's grounds, pale and translucent. All right, this next one is pretty famous. The Anguished Man. The artist is unknown. This painting, as it's named, depicts an anguished man. Unlike some of the pieces on this list that aren't necessarily scary without context, this one is immediately unsettling. So the man is just kind of stripped of all discernible features. No eyes, no mouth, just black voids, turning him almost into a vessel of pure terror. There's an urban legend that the artist painted part of the picture with his own blood before taking his life. The current owner, Sean Robinson, was given the painting by his grandmother, who kept the piece in her attic. She would tell him stories of disturbing sounds she would hear from her attic, like wailing and crying in the night. Robinson has said that he's experienced disturbing things in his home since taking the painting. His son told him he fell down the stairs and felt as if he were being pushed by unseen hands. Objects in the home would sometimes move by themselves it's definitely an unsettling piece of artwork. And coming in at number one, we have Pogo the Clown by John Wayne Gacy. I'd definitely take a portrait of John Wayne over John Wayne Gacy any day. No surprise why this one is said to have an aura of darkness around it. It's a portrait of Pogo the Clown, John Wayne Gacy's alter ego, which he actually painted himself. It's really icky. Not something I'd ever want in my home, but a musician bought it in 2001, apparently. And pretty soon after owning it, his dog passed away, and then his mother was diagnosed 
diagnosed with cancer. It could be a complete coincidence, of course. But then a friend of his took the painting, and that friend's neighbor then died in a car crash soon after. And finally, a second friend offered to take the piece, and not so long after, attempted to take their own life. In our number 10 spot, we have The Last Supper. Okay, so this one I think a lot of you might have expected to be on my list as it is known from the book The Da Vinci Code by author Dan Brown. And he pointed out an incredible secret that to this day, people are still pondering about. Is Mary Magdalene sitting beside Jesus in the Last Supper painting, or is that John the Apostle? And if it is not John the Apostle, then why was he painted so feminine, whereas everyone else is clearly a man in that painting? Some say Da Vinci painted him feminine because other painters before him did. This will continue to be of much speculation, but another secret that has actually been found within this painting was found by Italian computer technician Giovanni Maria. Paula, and he claims that inside the painting there are musical notes, and if played from left to right, they create a 40 second hymn that sounds like a requiem. In our number nine spot, we have the young woman powdering herself. This is a painting done by George Surratt between 1889 to 1890. This looks like an innocent painting of a woman just, you know, putting on her foundation for the day, maybe doing a little 1800s equivalent to contouring and finishing it off with a nice red lip. Anyways, there's a lot more going on with this painting than you may think. Recent x-rays have revealed that the flower in the top corner of the painting was actually once a self portrait of George. Apparently he covered it up because he was told that it was bizarre. Apparently it's even more notable because the woman in this painting was his mistress. So it would make sense that she would have a portrait of him hanging in her room. Ooh, secrets and lies. I doubt the ugliness of your portrait was the only reason you covered it up, George. Probably because the missus didn't know about your mistress. Naughty. <laughs> in our number eight spot, we have Supper at Emos. This is a painting that was made by Caravaggio in 1601. This painting is depicting Jesus with, we can assume to be his disciples, and they are sitting at a table with tons of food and fruit. At first glance, you might not see it, but if you look at the shadow of the fruit basket, you will see that the shadow is in the shape of a fish. People believe that this is a little purposeful Easter egg done by the painter, and that the fish is alluding to the story of Jesus feeding the masses with fish. Honestly, that makes sense, but he could have just put fish on the table. That doesn't need to be a secret in a shadow, but perhaps for fun, I guess I can see the appeal. In our number seven spot, we have David and Goliath. This is the David and Goliath painting that is in the Sistine Chapel that shows David defeating Goliath the giant. This painting was of course painted by none other than Michelangelo in 1509. This painting is already pretty spectacular, but apparently there's also a little hidden symbol within the painting. The way that David is standing over Goliath, his stance is perfectly in the shape of the Hebrew letter Gimel. The letter is supposed to represent reward and punishment, which of course works perfectly with what happens in this story. In our number six spot, we have the topsy-turvy world. This is an oil painting that is also known as the Blue Clock by Peter Bruegel, the Elder, done in 1559. This painting is so chaotic. It's hard to know what to focus on because there's so much happening and apparently it's on purpose. Within this painting are 112 proverbs acted out which are basically small statements that express truth about human behavior based on common sense or experience. Two that I could make out and thought were easy to see were swimming against the tide or banging one's head against a brick wall. 110 more to go. <laughs> could be here all night. Let me know if you see any in the comment section below. In our number five spot, we have Patch of Grass. 
by Van Gogh. The 1887 painting Patch of Grass is one of many paintings apparently by Van Gogh where another work of art has been found hidden behind the painting. In 2008, two scientists by the name of Joris Dick and Quan Janssens discovered an x-ray technique that helped them reveal a portrait of a peasant woman buried under the blades of the grass. The woman looks quite sad, so maybe that's why he decided to cover her up. Although apparently Van Gogh was known for reusing his paper due to not having a lot of supplies and money, so they have found a lot of paintings within his paintings over the years. Pretty awesome. In our number four spot, we have The Old Guitarist. This is a classic Pablo Picasso painting done in the early 1900s. It is known for its haunting vibe due to the way that the old man is hunched over playing his guitar just like this. <laughs> oh, just lovey. He also is quite white and ghostly. In 1998, an infrared camera revealed that there is actually another painting layered underneath this painting that features a woman. Apparently as this painting begins to fade, it has become easier to see the woman's face above the guitar player's neck. Honestly, the woman looks a lot more pleasant than this man. Perhaps that is why he is so ghostly and sad because he is thinking of her. Perhaps she was always intended to be there. She is a ghost that is within him in the afterlife. Okay, who knows, but that would be pretty cool if true. In our number three spot, we have the creation of Adam. This one is more cool than bizarre, I think, but you can decide. This is the beautiful creation of Adam painting done by none other than Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel. This is yet another painting where he had a hidden illustration within the painting, and personally, I think it is so cool. In this painting, you see God reaching for Adam to give him life, we all know the story. But if you look at God and what is surrounding him, you'll actually see that it's an anatomical illustration of a human brain, which could show that Michelangelo intended to show that God gave Adam life, but also human knowledge. Whoa, mind blown, it makes sense. <laughs> In our number two spot, we have Madonna with Saint Giovannino. This is a painting made by Domenico Girolandio around 1448-1494. This is a painting that has not actually become quite popular over the years because of its intended purpose. It's become popular because of the flying object that appears to be in the top right of the painting behind Madonna. Some believe it to be the first depiction of a UFO, which could indicate a sighting had occurred in the 15th century and quite possibly by the artist. Also, there weren't planes in this time, and this is certainly not a bird in the sky as there is no clear indication of wings. So does that mean that it was meant to depict something that wasn't of its time, like a UFO? I think yes. Let us know in the comment section below. In our number one spot, we have Head of a Peasant Woman by Van Gogh. I had to put this painting in our number one spot as this was only just discovered and the world is so very excited to have discovered yet another Van Gogh masterpiece. If you don't know Van Gogh, well, he is one of the most popular artists of the 20th century, so just take a moment and do some Googling. Anyways, a hidden prize was recently discovered behind his piece, The Head of a Peasant Woman, by the conservators at the National Gallery of Scotland. After x-raying the piece and not expecting much, they discovered that beyond the cardboard was not the peasant woman, but actually a self-portrait of Van Gogh. He was known to have done self-portraits, but to discover this, it must have been magical. The portrait is behind many layers of glue and cardboard and suspected to have been done this way to help protect the artwork for an upcoming exhibition in the early 20th century. How fascinating. I can't even imagine what that must have felt like to discover that. I bet you people around the world are now going to start x-raying all of the Van Goghs in the hopes of finding a hidden treasure. In our number 10 spot, we have the 
the separation of light from darkness. This is a painting done by Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, and yes, of course, he had some hidden anatomical illustrations throughout the painting. Apparently, if you look closely at the painting, you can find a depiction of the human spinal cord and the brain stem in the center of God's chest leading up to the throat. I mean, it could also be the clothing that he was wearing, but perhaps it's not. Perhaps he was trying to say that it's possible that God was a human. Or perhaps he wasn't. <coughs> But I suppose that's what's cool about art. After the artist has finished, it is up to you to decide what it means to you. In our number nine spot, we have Cafe Terrace at Night. This is a beautiful painting that was done by the very great Vincent van Gogh in 1888. The painting depicts a cafe at night in a beautiful French city. But upon further glance, a van Gogh expert proposed a different theory. If you look at the man standing up in white, he looks like he could have long hair like Jesus, and he's standing around 12 men that could be his disciples, and one of them is slipping into the shadows, which which could be seen as Judas. Oh! Apparently, there also seems to be a bunch of crucifixes throughout the painting, including one right above Jesus' head, and that leads us to believe this theory even more. Fascinating. In our number eight spot, we have The Ambassadors. The Ambassadors is a painting that was done in 1533 by Hans Halbiet. <laughs> by Hans Halbianeth Younger. At first glance, this is a nice painting. You know, it's two rich looking men that kinda look miserable. <laughs> That's what I originally saw at least. Anyone else with me? They look like they would rather be doing anything else but posing for a photograph. Anyways, if you look down at the base of this painting, you will see what appears to be a sideways skull. People believe that it is a reminder that death is around the corner, but personally, looking at the faces of these men, and perhaps they have experienced death most recently, and that is why they appear to be so unhappy. Hmm. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number seven spot, we have the music lesson. This painting was created by Johann Vermeer in 1662 to 1665. This painting has become known over time for perhaps its secret symbols of sexuality. In this painting, the woman looks like she is gazing down at the keys of a virginal, an instrument that is associated with female purity. However, apparently she is actually looking away from it, perhaps to meet the gaze of her instructor. Ooh, scandalous. This is shown by looking closely at her gaze in the mirror above her. Was this depicting a secret affair perhaps? There is also wine on the table that is considered an aphrodisiac and the instrument on the floor looks like it could also resemble a male's reproductive part if you know what I mean. <laughs> so perhaps there are one or two secrets hidden within this painting. In our number six spot we have view of Scheveningen Sands. This painting was made in 1641 by Hendrik van Anthonissen, and for quite some time it had a mystery to its viewers. People would look at the painting and think, what the heck are all the people on the beach standing around and looking at? It took 140 years for someone to remove a coat of yellow varnish while restoring the landscape, and this revealed that underneath there was a large whale on the beach, and that is what everyone was looking at. Wow. This is only a recent discovery in the last 10 years, and finally, this great secret has been solved. I wonder why the painter may have covered up the whale in the first place, though. Perhaps it was so that he could have a hidden secret within his painting. That's what I would do. In our number five spot, we have the Garden of Earthly Delights. The Garden of Earthly Delights was created between 1490 and 1510 by Hieronymus Bosch. This painting is truly epic to look at. It kind of blows my mind and makes me feel like the secrets of the world are hidden within it. In some areas, there looks like there are insect people, one specifically on a golden throne-like chair. Then there's a witch. And then there's just normal humans. A secret within this painting was only recently found by a college student, funny enough, and it's that if you zoom into the left hand corner of the piece, you can see a musical score tattooed across someone's behind, and that student even translated this and put it online for people to listen to. I personally actually listened to it, and it was awesome. 
would recommend Googling it. In our number four spot, we have The Persistence of Memory. This is a painting done by Salvador Dali in 1931, and it is truly a sight to see. In this painting, you see a bunch of melting clocks that most people believe is an ode to Einstein's theory of relativity, as Salvador was known to be a very wise, surrealist painter. But apparently, he was once quoted as saying that the clocks were inspired by gooey cheese. Quote, the melting clocks are nothing other than the tender, extravagant and solitary, paranoid, critical camembert of time and space. I suppose you can get inspiration from everywhere. <laughs> in our number three spot, we have Madame X. Madame X is a painting that was done in 1884 by John Singer Sargent, and it is a painting of a Parisian socialite by the name of Virginie Amélie Avengino Goutreau. Wow, okay. I'm proud. Apparently this painting had an original secret where one of the straps was falling off of her dress and it was believed that the painting scandalized the upper class society. John repainted the straps and renamed the painting and even moved to avoid embarrassment. Wow. Was this his 19th century way of revealing that she's rather promiscuous? If so, I'm here for it. Who knows, maybe he was having a secret affair with her and that was his way of telling others. In our number two spot, we have the prophet Zechariah. This is yet another work by Michelangelo where there is believed to be some cheeky hidden secrets throughout. The painting was done in the Sistine Chapel in 1508 to 1512. The other works that we talked about in this list and in part one of this video showed that perhaps Michelangelo put some wise ideas in his works. But this painting shows that perhaps he was feeling a bit shaky when he was doing this painting as it is possible that the young boy on the prophet's back is doing a sort of flipping off gesture <laughs> of that time. It looks like he has put his thumb between his middle and index finger and yeah, that's the 16th century equivalent to giving the middle finger. <laughs> If this were to be true and the boy is gesturing in this way to the prophet in the painting, this could very well reveal Michelangelo's true feelings about the Pope, they say. Ooh, 16th century gossip. This is starting to feel a little bit like Bridgerton, but you know, 16th century. In our number one spot we have, of course, the Mona Lisa. Da Vinci's Mona Lisa is certainly one of the most famous oil paintings in the world. Famous due to its mysteriousness and people have wondered for centuries what the heck was going on within her as her facial expression is the most curious. Without a doubt, she was a woman carrying a secret. The painting also holds the Guinness World Record for the highest known painting insurance in history, around just, you know, the small fortune of $870 million. Pennies, basically. Pretty wild. <laughs> this painting was made around 1503 to 1506 and has some speculation around it, including some believe that Mona Lisa was pregnant and that her holding her tummy depicts the secret, as well as the veil she was wearing was off often worn by pregnant women. It was also discovered that there are numbers and letters in her eyes. L was in her right eye, believed to be the initial of the painter himself, Leonardo, and S in the left eye, believed to possibly be the first letter of the woman in the painting, which would totally debunk who people always believed her to be, Lisa Garadini. The number 72 is also seen in the left eye, which could be a biblical reference as the number seven could mean the creation of the world, they say, it took God, you know, seven days to create the world. And number two represents duality, male and female. The number's significance just makes me believe even more so that she was pregnant. Maybe the S represents the initial of her future child. Who knows? In our number 10 spot, we have American Gothic. This is a painting that was made in 1930 by Grant Wood. This painting is so famous for making literally the entire world uneasy and a lot of people triggered. It it has this eerie feeling to it, which could be the colors, could be the atmosphere, or could be the fact that the woman is filled with annoyance and dislike for what can be assumed to be her husband. The man looks like maybe he's taking a stubborn stance on something that they were just talking about, but when you really look at his eyes, it looks like he might be a little unsure as to whether he should have actually said or did what he just did. That's my perspective. In any case, this is a painting that is feared by many and I honestly think if you stare at it long enough, it may curse you to have a very unhappy relationship like these two. But chances are, if you are triggered, you might already be in one. Ah, the signs of the universe. In our number nine spot, we have The Scream. The Scream is a painting that was made by a Norwegian artist by the name of Edvard Munch in 1893. 
It is clear by taking one look at this painting that Edvard could have possibly dealt with anxiety. The face in the painting looks completely anguished, and it looks as if the person behind the face is either having a panic attack or they could be shocked by something. But whatever it is, this painting, and specifically this face, has become a symbol for humanity's anguish and anxiety. A lot of people feel spooked when looking at this painting, but ultimately we all know how it feels to be anxious and it's not a nice feeling. So of course, looking at a picture that conveys this would make anyone feel uncomfortable. In our number eight spot, we have the hands resist him. Yep, this is probably one of the most terrifying paintings I have ever seen. First off, anytime I see porcelain dolls, I get very uncomfortable, and that girl looks like a porcelain doll. I mean, she also has no eyes, and it looks like she's threatening the boy, so that's terrifying as well. This painting was made by Bill Stoneham in 1972, and even though it is so dark, apparently the artist had gone on record to say that he had no bad intentions with this painting, yeah, none that he was aware of. <laughs> You've literally painted a painting of a boy that looks like he might eat the soul of the person he's looking at if the girl doesn't eat his soul first. And then you proceed to tell the world, ah, nah, I had no bad intentions at all. Ah, oh, humans, you make me laugh. Also, the painting apparently gained a reputation on eBay for being cursed, so I bet you it actually is. Apparently, the characters are said to move at night. As much as I should be scared by this, this actually sounds like something I want to see. In our number seven spot, we have the dead mother. This is another painting by Edvard Munch that was painted in 1899. I wish he was still alive so that I could give him a hug because man, does this man seem like he needs a hug. This is yet another dark painting by him. As you can tell by the title, it portrays a mom lying in her bed while the people around her are mourning her and the girl in front of her has a face of shock, sadness, and anxiety. The adults don't seem to be acknowledging the anxiety-ridden girl and I think that is what feels the most unsettling in this painting. Knowing that this girl will now forever more go through life without her mom and will seemingly have to deal with the grief alone. That definitely hits a trigger point for me. This painting is definitely haunted with the energy of sadness. In our number six spot, we have Evil Clown Painting. Well, I think the name says it all. This painting is definitely evil. Honestly, clowns in general are probably just evil, so I try to stay away from them in general, but this one in particular gives me the goosebumps. The painting was done by Daniel W. Green. After doing a little Googling, I found out that a, Daniel is still alive, and B, not all of his stuff is spooky like this, so I have hope that perhaps he made this painting out of getting into the Halloween spirit, if you will. But still, the energy of this painting is pretty chilling, and I wouldn't advise looking at it for too long. Or if you must, then look at a picture of a cute dog afterwards to shake off the low vibes. In our number five spot, we have the Triumph of Death. The Triumph of Death is a painting created by Peter Brugel the Elder back in 1562. This is a painting that is believed to be haunted as it depicts mass death and war and truly just an energy of overwhelming sadness. Skeletons pull a wagon of heads while the wagon is running over people. People lay in piles on top of each other. Mountains burn in the distance symbolizing a new world coming and mass destruction. Destruction. So, yeah, this painting is pretty haunting to look at. I'd much rather look at a painting of people dancing and smiling and eating delicious food. But that's just me. In our number four spot, we have Dante and Virgil in Hell. Dante and Virgil in Hell is a painting done by William Adolphe Bouhereau in 1850. This painting is completely chilling as there are clearly vampires and demons being depicted. The only thing positive about this painting is the guy on the right's leg and butt. <laughs> Super fit, good looking guy it seems. So sad that he will die. The people in this painting are painted way too lifelike, which I think makes the painting more uncomfortable to look at. But honestly, the worst part for me would have to be the Wizard of Oz type bat demons flying around. And then the one with the scary eyes on the ground. Don't look at them for too long or they may curse you. 
In our number three spot, we have The Anguished Man. The Anguished Man is actually painted by an unknown artist. A man named Sean Robinson claimed that he inherited the painting from his grandmother. And apparently his grandmother told him that the artist of the painting mixed his own blood into the paint and died by taking his own life after finishing the painting. People believe this painting to be haunted as Sean has claimed that he has heard crying and moaning noises in his house and also that he once saw the figure of a man that he believes is the same as the person in the painting. Some things don't need to be an inheritance. Maybe just donate that one, Sean. Unless, of course, you enjoy the sounds of someone crying in your house, in which case my response to that is, perhaps you need therapy. I've done it for many years, would recommend. In our number two spot, we have Portrait of Samantha Houston. Okay, maybe this isn't a popular opinion, but this picture doesn't scare me. People say, that the ghost of the kid in this painting, who we can assume to be Samantha, haunts a hotel that this painting is in. But I don't know, this looks like a Casper the Friendly Ghost kind of situation to me. Apparently Samantha, four years old, went to the Driscoll Hotel in Austin with her father in 1887 when she fell down the stairs and passed away. Since then they have said that she haunts the hotel as well as this painting of her. But honestly, to claim to have a haunted hotel really just sounds like a marketing campaign to me. But it does seem that the guests have claimed to feel not nauseous when viewing this painting, as well as a feeling of falling. That's terrifying. So that's pretty interesting. Hopefully that's all the trickery this ghost plays. She's way too cute to be a mean ghost. In our number one spot, we have the stagecraft of the hanging man. This is an oil painting that is an adaptation of an eerie photograph where there is a wooden cart and it wasn't until after the photograph was developed that there appeared to be a headless man also in the shot. The artist of the painting version, who goes by the name of Laura P, was drawn to this photograph and felt as if she was called to paint it. But perhaps that was not a positive hunch as so many strange things have happened since painting it. She said that the painting has been responsible for a mysterious leak, items that are broken and knocked over, and every so often she hears knocks on her door. Perhaps this painting is an entrance to another world, and the ghosts are politely knocking, asking if they can come in and go into the painting. I don't know. Apparently she has considered selling the painting, but she does fear what might happen if she does. But honestly, she should just make the buyer sign a contract to take full responsibility and something that says, you know, that it is not Laura's fault if they are haunted. You know how people say, be careful what you wish for? Honestly, be careful what you put out into the world energy-wise and be careful what you paint.